since the dawn of the space age, we've been launching things into space, and um, a lot of it hasn't come back down, so it's accumulating in space. So the aim of our mission, Remove Debris, is to actually go up there and uh, test something called active debris removal. From old spacecrafts to broken satellites, space is now full of hazardous debris called space junk. In fact, there's more than 7,500 tons of it. This is not just regular trash. For example, the wrong collision up there could cripple many of our communication systems. And a cleanup has been long overdue. But how do you do it? Well, a group of international scientists have become the first ever to clean up space junk, and they're doing it using a net. It's called the Remove Debris Satellite. And one man who helped to create it is Alistair Wayman. He's an advanced project systems engineer at Airbus Defence and Space and joins me from Stevenage in the UK. Alistair, good to have you on the program. Before I ask you about how it actually works, is space junk really that dangerous? I mean, how potentially hazardous can it really be? We're starting to use um, the space environment more and more nowadays, relying on it for things such as communications uh, or positioning systems when we're using sat navs, things like that. Um, and given that we're launching more and more things up there, um, the risk being posed by space debris to those, those things that we rely on in our everyday life is, is growing all the time. And now tell me how this net works and how much of the trash it can actually clean up. So the net works um, by being on a, on a spacecraft that will go and find a piece of space debris. Um, and then it will fire the net towards uh, that piece of space debris. It will open out and um, engulf that piece of space debris um, so that then we've, we've got it captured. Um, then we'll use a, a tether, kind of like a rope, to then pull that piece of space debris back down um, through the atmosphere so that it um, either burns up or lands somewhere um, on the surface of the Earth that's not going to pose a risk to, to anybody or anything. We, by doing this um, process, we can, we can capture any of the um, large pieces of space debris that are up there. So this is targeted at things on the scale of uh, satellites before they um, fragmented into smaller pieces. Um, and of those, there's, there's around about 1,200 of those still up there in space at the minute. These so, are really yeah. interesting pieces of space debris yeah. that we want to capture before they collide and create more smaller pieces that are, are hard to right. clear up. Yeah, so I mean, I, I, I guess, is there a triage that you do where you assess what's the most dangerous stuff? That's the stuff we're going to go and grab with the net and, and get it out the way before you look at the other stuff. Exactly. That's, that's where we're targeting uh, this technology so that we can prevent these, these big pieces of space debris um, colliding into other things and becoming smaller bits of space debris. Those smaller pieces can still do a lot of damage mm -hmm. to, the, to the spacecraft that, that we're still relying on now. But because they're much smaller, they're harder to track um, and they're much harder for us to actually get a hold of and bring back down um, out of space. Right. And sort of, I guess, on a larger, more philosophical level, we're going to continue to have this kind of progress unless our entire civilization collapses, which isn't going to happen anytime soon, we hope. We're seeing nation states and private corporations launching stuff up into space, satellites for, for multiple reasons. Is it possible to actually have this sort of progress and to launch all these satellites into space without leaving behind dirty dishes? As long as we start to um, implement um, and, and enforce um, suitable rules and suitable processes um, that, that will prevent this, then, then yes, it is, it is possible. Um, what we need to do is we need to make sure that um, any spacecraft that are launched um, will be able to come back down uh, naturally within um, something like 25 years after the end of their mission or um, have a, a means of bringing themselves back down um, within that 25-year window. Um, and for anything that's up there at the minute or anything that does fail up there, services like this are going to prevent um, those pieces of space debris to... to uh, from, from polluting the environment in a, in a significant manner. Okay. Alistair Wayman, good to pick your brain here on the Newsmakers. Thank you very much for joining us.